Hello everyone, I'm Brian Drury of Overcoming Graduation and today I wanna to share a quick speaker tip on why your audiences aren't engaging and aren't taking action. So, so often in speeches, we think it's just all about the words we're saying and we don't focus on the tone, we don't focus on the prep and being present with the people in the room or on the screen virtually. I know in this new world, a lot of the speaker training clients and the executive speaking training clients that I work with are now trying to have the challenge of, hey, I'm great on stage, but I'm having trouble adapting to just speaking to a screen. So how do I keep them engaged? How do I make sure they know I care about them? And how do I get them to move and take action? The reason people don't take action is because they're in a comfortable enough state that it doesn't trigger any desire or need or urgency to make a change. You think about dietary changes. If a doctor says in 10 years, if you keep this up, it will probably have some pretty bad effects. Well, the person goes, well, that's far enough away. They don't have to deal with it right now. And as human beings, unless we create and cultivate that discipline, it's really easy to just push that away and go, yeah, I'll deal with that. That's a problem for future Brian, right? No big deal. So instead of that, if we want people to recognize the immediacy and the need, rather than wait until there's an emergency and then have to react, it's prepare, change, shift course so that maybe you never have to face that challenge. And in fact, you're not only avoiding this challenge, you're able to serve in a greater way because you're able to help more people when you're taking care of yourself and the things you need to. So when we think about how do we get people to engage and how do we get them to take action? And here's a very critical thing because in any sales or promotion point, it's always important for me to be congruent and not force things down people's throats, but find the right audiences and give them the solutions they want. So when you're in a room of people that wants the solution you have, how do you get them to take action? Well, part of it is you need to link pain to the inaction. Think about what they won't be able to do, what they won't achieve, what life won't look like if they don't take action. And then on the other hand, you need to be able to tell them what the compelling future looks like because they need to have something that is pulling them forward and something that's pushing them from their current state and behaviors because if there's no pain linked to the current identity, it's really hard to make the change because we go, hey, things are good. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if we realize that our current state and our current behaviors and our current choices are gonna lead to some real heavy consequences and we create immediacy, uh, immediacy and urgency to make those changes, well, now we go, oh man, well, I've gotta do something. Where am I going? Oh, compelling future, that's where I wanna go. So now let's chunk that thing down into manageable steps so that we can take action. So as a speaker, as a coach, as a salesperson, as an entrepreneur, it's part of our responsibility to deliberately trigger increased and advanced emotional states to help us move away from negative realities and move towards positive realities. One without the other is incomplete because the positive can be compelling to a point, but if there's not enough urgency created by that potential pain or that current pain, people will go like, yeah, that's great, but I'll work on it one day. I'll write the book in a year. And then it keeps getting pushed out and pushed out. If it's just focused on the pain, it can feel overwhelming because you go, well, I don't want this, but I don't know where I'm going or, or, or what, what are my options? We've got to make choices. We've got to help them identify positive, compelling future elements. We've got to help them identify and intensify the pain in the current state and their current behaviors so that they can make the shifts, make the small changes to shift their identity and take different action to become the person they've always wanted to be. So I hope this message was a benefit to you and I hope this was of value. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking the button below. Also like, comment, share. I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear what you're gonna do with this. How are you gonna use this information? Was it a reminder? Is it the first time you heard it? I would love to hear from you and I'll comment back on your comments as well. If you haven't already subscribed to the Overcoming Graduation mailing list, emailing list, I would love to have you on there because that's the best spot to connect with the upcoming events, the new programs, special offers and discounts on products and services. So if you're looking to stay in touch with this energy, this community, this group, visit overcominggraduation.com, enter your name and email on the pop-up. You'll be immediately added to the list and you'll get a little free gift as a thank you and a welcome present. So I love you all. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a part of this. I'll be talking to you again real soon.